Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have, uh, I can't wait. <laughs> I've got something special because I'm playing against Plague Doctor and he challenged me to build a deck out of this magazine. This is a Charities Fellowships Magic the Gathering catalog that I got for Christmas uh, three years ago from Plague Doctor. And in this catalog, we have suggested deck options. So what I've done is I've picked a deck from here. Plague Doctor has picked a deck from here. And this, these decks are kind of insane. So you know what? Um, let's just start the episode and you'll see the decks. Uh, enjoy. It's going to be a lot of fun. By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And as I told you in the introduction, we have a very special episode, two very flavorful decks going against each other. We have um, Plague Doctor playing a deck called Honorable Death. It is white, green, and black, and it is kind of silly, and he's taking on my white and red deck, and that's called Saruman's Horde. So that's like a Lord of the Rings themed deck. Now, I'm just very excited about this. Uh, in a moment, I'm going to show you both of the decks. I've got perfect deck photos. I'm looking forward to kind of discuss it with you. But before I jump into the deck decks, I would first like to mention that, as always, you can also choose to skip this part of the video. Go to the games straight away. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. So if you just click on there, it'll take you straight to the game action. And uh, for now, I'm going to continue with the uh, deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent, Plague Doctor. Let's have a look at his deck. So here we see the deck of Plague Doctor. Now in the magazine, you get the following instructions. It says, Honorable Death, White, Green and Black. Even, so I guess distributed evenly, 100 plus cards, 5 black knights, 5 white knights, 2 vampires, 2 angels, 5 basilisks, 1 cockatrice, 1 or 2 elvish archers, so 1 or 2, 1 of each ward, and COP, so that's pretty uh, crazy, 4 lances, a few terrors, tranquilities, disenchants, stream of life, and lanawer elves. The goal is to try to first strike with those basilisks. So that's kind of interesting, right? Because you only play five Basilisks and maybe that sounds like a lot, but remember, this is a 100 plus card deck. So if your goal is, which is super cool to first strike with the Basilisk, which I love, you know, it's a great idea. Um, but then still, why only play five? I would just like put 10 in there or something. Now do remember, this is of course created in the alpha beta period where the amount of cards were quite scarce, but uh, Basilisk is of course an uncommon, so it was slightly easier to get than uh, the rare cards, I guess, I assume. Maybe if you played yourself in those days, please let me know in the comments. I started playing in 1995 and beta never reached my hands. I never bought that like out of a, out of a booster pack. The oldest magic booster pack I ever opened was I think the Dark, and later on, I've opened a Legends Italian one, but that was more after it wasn't sold anymore in uh, in the Netherlands where I started playing Magic. So yeah, maybe you can let me know. But this is a very interesting list also because, I mean, this is a 100 plus card deck suggestion. And if I add up all these cards that are mentioned here, I get like to what, 20, 30 cards maybe? So you've got 70 cards that you kind of have to fill in yourself, which I love. And I, I think... That also has something to do, and again, correct me if I'm wrong if you were playing in those days, but I think that really has something to do with the fact that you didn't have access to all the cards. You just had to make do with what you had. So I think these decks are really more open suggestions saying, you know, if you don't have these cards, you can still kind of fill the gaps and the rest of the slots are open to kind of see what you have in your own collection and try to make the best out of it. So it's just a suggestion and it gives you some cool ideas. So again, I love this idea of, you know, putting a lance on your... Uh, basilisk i think that's that's really cool in case you don't know what what lance does by the way you don't see that card that often it's an enchant creature for one white uh, that gives first strike to the creature so it's, it's pretty cool it's pretty flavorful i really like uh the way this deck looks by the way i'm looking forward to play against it but i'm also a little bit worried because i think my deck is way more consistent talking about that let's take a look at my list and here we see my deck saruman's horde so i'm just gonna you know read out the uh, the text as the deck is kind of described in the magazine. So I've got here, Saruman's Horde, red and white, three stone giants, 12 orcs, four throwing. <laughs> so I, really, I love that, that they specify it 
What are they for? They're for throwing. Seven Orgish Artilleries, a COP Red, some Disenchants and Damage Dealers. A few Ogres, Hill Giants and Trolls, some Holy Strengths can help. Which I find kind of an odd inclusion, the Holy Strength. I guess you could put them on the Stone Giant and you can throw also the Hill Giants with your Stone Giant. That would be kind of cool. Um, as you can see, I've diverted somewhat to this list for a few, like, actually practical reasons. So first of all, they mentioned 12 orcs for throwing. I only have six Iron Claw orcs in my collection. I was going through it. I only have these six. So I couldn't go to the 12, unfortunately. I did have seven orcish artilleries, which I was surprised about. So I could play them. I also had three stone giants. So I kind of felt like I could still build this deck. I decided to make it a 60 card deck because it doesn't specify how many cards should actually be in the deck. So I just assumed that then 60 cards. Because for some decks in the magazine, they've specified to 50 cards or 100 cards or 100 plus cards like the deck of Plague Doctor. But in my case, they didn't. So I kind of had to fill in some slots on my own. They also say some damage dealer. So I thought, you know, it's probably not fun to go for four bolts, you know, fireballs, all that. So I just decided to, to think of the instants and sorceries kind of as these spells that Saruman is casting in battle. So he's just going to cast them once. So he's got a lightning bolt he can cast once. He's got a fireball, uh, an earthquake. He's got a disenchant and he's got uh, the, the regenerator. Oh, what's it called again? The instant, the death ward, that's it. So he's, he can cast a death ward once, right? Um, and then I thought, if you're Saruman, you probably benefit from people dying because you're evil. Well, people, creatures dying, I should say, because you're evil. You've joined uh, Sauron, right? You once were the white wizard. Now you're super evil. So you're making all these orcs. And when an orc die, you don't really mind. He's not really this caring character anymore, right? He's like, whatever, F all. I just want full power. I'm going for full power. So uh, if, if an orc died, I figured he should gain from that, you know. So that's why there are soul, the soul net is in here. I thought the soul net's quite flavorful because then every time a creature dies, if it's his own creature or a creature of the opponent, doesn't matter, he can gain a life. He, he gains stronger. He gets new life force from death, literally, with the soul net. And then I also figured out the thing that the orcs are lacking in the alpha beta set is there's no captain for the orcs. So I thought I'm gonna do Keldon Warlord as the captain, right? Orcish captain came much later in Fallen Empire. So I just had the alpha beta card pool to choose from. So I went for um, the uh, the Keldon Warlord to lead them. And then I also figured out since I already have hill giants in there and stone giants in there, I might as well go that extra step with the giants and go for a two headed giant as well, which is kind of this big beast in this deck. Um, what I do like about this deck is there are some Nice synergies in the deck, right? You've got Stone Giant, for example, with Often Troll. That kind of works because you throw away the Often Troll and you can regenerate it so that it doesn't die at the end of turn. Because remember, when you use Stone Giant's ability to give target creature uh, flying, it, it's destroyed at the end of turn. But destroyed means you can still regenerate it. So with Death Ward, but also with the Often Troll's regeneration ability, you can regenerate the creatures. Um, and then you also have COP Red that works together really well with Orcish Artillery. And Orcish Artillery is this 1-3 for two red mana and one that you can tap to deal two damage to any target, but then it deals three damage to you. So you can prevent that damage with your COP red. So I thought those little little things and synergies in the deck was kind of cool. It's one of the reasons I chose it. I decided myself to add in the Orcish Aura Flame, again, kind of for that theme. And I think it's just gonna be really good in this deck. I am a little bit worried as to the power levels of these two decks, because I think my deck looks quite consistent. Obviously all my tutus are not gonna like the, the White Knights, the Black Knights, the Elvish Archers. But on the other hand, I can kill all those creatures that I just mentioned with my Orcish Artillery. So I kind of feel that my deck is better because it's more consistent. You know, it's it's not good, don't get me wrong, but I think it's better than a 100-card deck. But I hope not, let me put it that way. I hope for a nice balanced battle, obviously. Anyway, uh, enough talk. Let's actually go to the action and see how these two decks... Uh, do against each other. I mean, are they going to fare well or will it be a very one-sided match? Who knows? Only one way to find out. Let's duel. Game number one. Here we go. Play Doctor on the play here with his uh, white, green, and black deck. Honorable Death. A hundred card deck. Unsleeved as we can see. And he's taking on my 60 card deck. Saruman's Horde. It's white and red. Okay, here we see an Elfish Archers 2-1 First Striker. And let's see if I can play an Iron Claw Orc here. Yep, I've got plenty in the deck, six in total. And the Elfish Archer is, of course, a great blocker for those Iron Claw Orcs because it's a 2-1 first striker. 
There we see another Swamp here. So all the colors for Plague Doctor, pretty good start for him. There's the attack. Just going to take the damage here, dropping to 18. There is a green tapped for a Llanowar Elves. Also four Llanowar Elves, I believe, in the deck. And Plague Doctor really wants to play out the Thicket Basilisks as quickly as he can. He's playing five in total. There is another Mountain, so maybe I can find an Orcish Artillery. That will be quite good. First the attack, Plague Doctor on 18. Passing the turn, though. So it looks like I don't have that Orcish Artillery in my hand. I mean, it would be quite good. I've got seven in total in the deck. There's the attack on a drop to 16. So pretty good start again for Plague Doctor. There's a Black Knight, so playing with four Black Knight, four White Knights, and four Elvish Archers. There's the pass of the turn, so the untap of the Iron Claw. Can I find another land? Hopefully a Stone Giant here, that will be quite helpful. That's a 3-4. Tapping 4, okay. No, an Orcish Oriflame. So Orcish Oriflame is an enchantment and it gives all your attacking creatures plus 1, plus 0. Oh. So it can be useful. There's a quick disenchant though, so... The Oriflame is a goner. Of course, it's very flavorful to play, play with the Orcs and the Orcish Oriflame together. There's another Plains. So now he's got enough mana to cast a Thicket. Already had that, of course, with the Llanowar Elves uh, last turn. The question is, does he have it? Like, his deck wants to play a Thicket Basilisk with a Lance on it. <laughs> That's kind of the strategy. I just got to laugh talking about it. It's so funny. And what I want to do is basically throw my Iron Claw Orcs to Plague Doctor's face with the Stone Giant. But I first need to have a Stone Giant, though. Tapping three. Ooh, there's an Orcish Aura Flame. Yeah, this, uh, sorry, Orcish Artillery, of course, I mean. Uh, and this is really, really good because I can tap the Orcish Artillery. Not now, of course, it's got Summoning Sickness, but next turn, then I can deal two damage to any target, but I take three damage myself. There's a Terror, though. Uh, probably going to go here on the uh, Artillery. Exactly. Wow, this is looking really good for Plague Doctor. I'm already on 12. I still have no good blockers for the Elvish Archers or the Black Knight. He could even attack now with the Lana Elves. Exactly. Dealing 5, dropping to 7. Oh man, this is bad. Plague Doctor on 16. There's another threat on the board. So I mean, I am playing with one Earthquake in the deck, so that could really help me here. Earthquake for 2 would clean up the board. Tapping 3, are we going to see another Artillery? Okay, and at least the Artillery, you know, it's a 1-3 as well. There's a Grey Ogre. So okay, this Grey Ogre is just a vanilla 2-2 two, two for 3. But, um, you know, at least it can block something. But I think the artillery really needs to stick around because with that I can block a 2 2 first striker without the artillery dying, being a 1 3 creature itself. And of course, I can block the elfish archers if he chooses to attack. I guess at the. Ooh, he is attacking very aggressive into the red zone. And uh, I guess I'm going to block the elfish archer here, going to kill it, and then just jump with the ogre, exactly going to. Block one of the knights and gonna take two, gonna drop to five. Now remember, I can't even block with the Iron Claw Orcs. I can only block creatures with power one or less. Like the Iron Claw Orcs are <laughs> just these coward, cowardly creatures, right? Uh, and here we've got a Sarah Angel. Oh no, this is really bad. This Sarah Angel is probably gonna seal the deal here. I'm on five. I don't have any flyers in the deck, I believe. Another Iron Claw Orcs. Okay, that's not going to help at all. Like, I mean, I'm I've got one Fireball and I've got one Lightning Bolt in the deck. So I could combine the Orcish Artillery ability with a Bolt to kind of kill the Sarah, but then I still deal three damage to myself as well if I do that. I'm already on five, so yeah, it's looking dire. Um, there's the attack into the red zone. I guess he's tapping the angel just to clarify that he's attacking with it. So, oh, look at this. I'm going to block a knight. And then, um, yeah, that's it. That's it. For a moment there, I thought because I tapped the um, artillery that I had another plan, but I didn't. So, I <laughs> just, I'm dead. Game number one here, won by Plague Doctor. So, that's pretty surprising here. So, here you can see the strength of his 2-2 uh, two -two army. I mean, he's got a lot of 2-2s two for two, and if he's able to play them out consistently like he did in this game, it's looking pretty good. Anyway, we're going to shuffle up, and we're going to start with game number two.
Game uh, number two, here we go. So there is a mountain being played. I'm on the play, of course, after losing that first game. Plague Doctor starting with the planes. Turn two, are we going to see it again? Iron Claw Orcs. Okay, that's good. Can start attacking. Let's hope that Plague Doctor cannot find a White Knight or an Elvish Archer or any of those first strike creatures with two power. Ooh, there's a forest. Are we going to see an Elvish Archer? Ooh, COP Green. Okay, that's good. I can survive a COP Green. Remember, his deck has all the wards and all the Circle of Protections, which is not ideal for him, obviously, playing against the White Red deck. And uh, we don't have any sideboards, so we didn't sideboard. Just attacking for two, putting him on 18. Am I going to find an Orcish Artillery here? No, an often troll. Oi, oi, oi. So this is a 2-2 two, two creature, one red to regenerate it. And that's, of course, uh, ideal at least to block those first strike creatures. But for now, I'm planning to attack with it unless Plague Doctor plays out a good blocker. Another forest here for him. So no black mana yet. Remember, he's got a three-color deck. Passing the turn. Okay, so it's not as great of a start as that game one for Plague Doctor. Now I've got four damage in the pipes. But first, I'm going to cast something, it seems. Tapping four. Oh, there's the Orcish Aura Flame. So that means six damage. Wow. That is a pretty big hit. It looks like there's no disenchant from Plague Doctor. Or he's got to play it right now. Six power into the red zone. There we see Plague Do Doctor dropping here to 12. Yeah, this is a completely different game. Where you saw in game one that Plague Doctor was kind of overwhelming me. It's now the other way around where I'm really going too quick for him. There's at least a swamp. So maybe he can find a terror that would be quite good on the often troll, for example, passing the turn. Now remember, this is an instant, of course, so you can just wait with casting it. But it's not looking good for him. There's a plateau. Tapping four, tapping five even. Oh, there's a two-headed giant 4-4 four, four trampler. And that's, of course, going to get that bonus from the aura flame as well. First attacking here for six damage. Wow. If there's no terror, no, there's not. Just taking the damage, he's going to drop to six. Oh, this is looking so bad for him. A terror here, probably on the two-headed giant. But still, he's dead next turn. Unless he can play at least one blocker. COP Red. Okay, that's actually kind of good. COP Red can help him here. He's got two mana open to prevent the damage from the often troll and the Iron Claw Orcs. There's another forest. Untapping my forces here. Do I have a disenchant? Because I do play with some disenchants myself. A stone giant. That's not going to help much. I am going to attack, I guess. Yeah, I mean, what else are you going to do with these creatures? Just forcing Plague Doctor to at least tap two mana. For what it's worth. So he's going to prevent it here with his COP red. And I'm playing a one-off disenchant. So I just have to find that one-off disenchant here. It's pretty cool, by the way, Plague Doctor's uh, play mat. You know, it's, it looks like the Shire from The Hobbit. So that's really on theme. I guess I need a different playmat when I play with Saruman's Horde. I don't really have a good one for this deck, actually. Anyway, attacking here. Oh, this is 10 damage into the red zone. Luckily, he's got the COP. So protecting everything. And there's another Iron Claw Orc, though. So my army is growing and growing. And... I mean, yes, Plague Doctor has the Circle of Protection red, but he needs to keep all the mana open to stay alive. And that makes it really difficult for him, right? For example, now if he wants to tap two, it means he's probably going to take some damage next turn. There is a COP white. I guess he just wants to play at all the Circle of Protections. I get that. And I'm playing with white, but I don't think I have any white damage dealing sources in my deck. But I mean, I, it's cool, you know, it's cool to see all the COPs. I think that's one of the things that Honorable Death wants to do. It would also be great to see a ward at a certain point. Anyway, attacking with all my creatures now, of course, and he can uh, prevent three sources from coming in. So I guess he's going to probably take damage from, for example, the Iron Claw Orc or just the Often Troll. So takes three damage from that because of the Orcish Aura Flame. So halving his life total. Which is bad news for him. Tapping. Even more creatures hitting the board. There's an Orcish Artillery. Playing seven of those in this deck. Kind of insane. Wanted to play more Iron Claw Orcs than six, by the way, but didn't have any more. 
I mean, when do you ever build a deck with 12 Iron Claw Orcs? When does that happen? Never. Plague Doctor here passing the turn. So drawing a card for turn here. So he's got all the mana open. So he's got five mana open so he can prevent all the damage coming in. Am I going to play out even more creatures? Another Aura Flame. Wow. So that means they all get a bonus of plus two plus oh, which is not relevant now because Plague Doctor has that COP red. Look at that. Pre preventing all the damage. And I mean, this kind of reminds me of, of actual games we used to play back in, in 95 when I started playing. And I remember at our LGS at a certain point, you couldn't play with any Circle of Protections anymore because we just thought it was, you know, kind of corny. But also we didn't play with direct damage uh, to, the, to the face, directly to the player. So there's what's kind of that balance that we agreed upon uh, playing in our, uh, in our LGS. Oh, there's a Disenchant. Yeah, that means the end of the line probably here. Disenchant on the COP red and now it can swing in and uh, yeah, it's pretty much over. I was thinking, by the way, looking back at it now, I think, okay, maybe in response he could have used the COP to prevent the damage, but then he would have died the next turn, I'm sure. Anyway, here we see the hand of Plague Doctor. Actually, it was pretty good. He just needed a second white. And uh, one of the things I believe we decided after this game is uh, that Plague Doctor would board out the, uh, the green wards and the white uh, circle protection whites and stuff. Or at least, I mean, circle protection white, I guess, could be useful against my deck in some kind of way but anyway we we decided that he could board out the uh the circle of protections and wards that were really unuseful unuseful for him just to create a more fun game right because yeah it's cool to see those circles being played out but if they're not useful it's probably more balanced if he takes them out of the deck so anyway just for your information i believe that's what we decided to do anyway it's one one remember it's a best of five so we are now going to go on to game number three Game number three, here we go. So look at that, I'm taking a mulligan here. So starting with six, I guess. I'm on the draw after winning the second game. Plague Doctor on the play here. Remember, it is a best of five. So this is not yet decisive. Plague Doctor starting with a swamp, passing the turn. I have a mountain. Ooh, I've got to turn one play. Soul Net, haven't seen that card yet. So Soul Net, an artifact. Whenever a creature goes to a graveyard, I can pay one to gain one life. There is a planes here by Plague Doctor. Does he have a turn to play? Nope, he doesn't. Passing the turn, no circle of protection for him. There's a planes. I'm expecting an Iron Claw Orc here. Exactly an Iron Claw Orc. It's so nice if you can play more than four of something. <laughs> I mean, your deck gets a lot more consistent. So I can start swinging in next turn. Or is there going to be a blocker here by Plague Doctor? There's a Netling Imp. Ooh, that could be annoying like later on in the game. So Netling Imp is a 1-1. One, one. You can tap the Imp and then force target creature of the opponent to attack. First, uh, just attacking here. Going to put Plague Doctor on 18. Playing out nothing, so no Orcish Artillery for me. I guess that's good news for Plague Doctor. Ooh, he's just passing the turn, missing a land drop. That is tough. And remember, he's playing three colors, also missing the color green. But I'm also passing the turn here, so both of us kind of stuck. Okay, there's that green mana for Plague Doctor. Let's see if he can take any advantage of that, tapping the one green. Lanara Elves hitting the board, so a little bit of ramping. Next turn, he can have five mana. If he then has a Sarah Angel, for example, that would be a big problem for me. Attacking here with my 2-2. Could consider double blocking, although I don't think that's a... Oh, he does. He's going to double block to kill... The Iron Claw Orc. Ooh, I can get a lot of life with my Soul Net. Ooh, look at me go here. Is that for the Soul Net? Yeah, it's for the Soul Net. Doing work. Gonna go up to 23. Remember, for each creature going to the graveyard, I can tap a mana to gain a life. That's pretty nice. Soul Net actually quite good when you're playing multiplayer formats. Like we sometimes play multiplayer 93, 94, which is quite fun. And there I play a Soul Net. There's a Lanora else here hitting the board. Another one. Tapping three. What are we going to get? Ooh, there's the Orcish Artillery. And now that Netling Imp would have been really good, right? Because he could have forced my Artillery to at least attack. So I couldn't use its ability. Or if I would use its ability, the Artillery would uh, destroy itself at the end of the turn. Because it has to attack. Oh, wow. Netling Imp together with Thicket would have been awesome. I'm sure Plague Doctor is 
regretting his decision. Of course, you never know what the future uh, future will hold, but there's only one netling imp in the deck here for Plague Doctor. He's on 16 at the moment. I mean, it's still looking okay for him. I guess he can attack next turn with the uh, Thicket. I don't really have an answer to that yet. And I can consider killing the Lanora Elves, but remember when I tap the, uh, the um, Artillery, I take three damage as well. And here we see a Stone Giant. So Stone Giant is a 3-4 creature that you can tap to give target creature flying. Then the power has to be less than the toughness of the Stone Giant, I believe. I mean, it's a card I don't play often, so if I'm wrong, <laughs> please, please don't kill me in the comments. But I, I believe that's what it does. Uh, anyway, there's the attacker with the 2-4. And the idea, of course, of the deck is that you, you throw the Iron Claw Orcs at your opponent, which I think is super flavorful. Also, you're being Sauron, right? Uh, Saruman, I mean. And Saruman doesn't care much for the life of the Orcs. Killing the Lanora Elves here, but it doesn't mean I take three more damage. I'm, I've dropped now to 18. So going from 23 all the way down to 18 in just a single turn. I could consider attacking now with the Stone Giants. Got three power, tapping four first. A Kelden Warlord. Okay, that's a 3-3 now. So Kelden Warlord has power toughness equal to the amount of creatures. So that's kind of uh, kind of okay. I think... Do I want to tap? No, I don't. What am I planning here? Untapping the plateau again. I would consider just attacking here, to be honest. Oh, and holy strength. Wow, that is pretty sweet. So now my Stone Giant is a 4-6. So attacking Plague Doctor for four points of damage. So there are two Holy Strengths in the deck because it was given in the description of the deck kind of as a tip. You could play Holy Strength. So I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's go for it. Tapping three green. Oh, Tranquility to get rid of that uh, Holy Strength. I love these games. How often do you see that, right? A Holy Strength and then a Tranquility to get rid of it. That's just really funny. No attack here, by the way, by Plague Doctor, which I think is a good decision. He kind of has to protect his life total here. And I'm going to untap the Stone Giant and draw a card for turn. I'm just hoping I can make a really big Keldon Warlord. That would be quite sweet. I mean, I've got five more Iron Claw Orcs in the deck, so... Should be able to play out some more. But that Thicket is quite annoying, right? It's really a good wall. Tapping three more. Ooh, another Orcish Artillery. So now, next turn, I can use a double Orcish Artillery to kill the Thicket. Of course, it is going to cost me six life because the Artillery will hurt me. Attacking here with the Warlord, by the way. It's a 4-4. Four, four. So offering Plague Doctor the trade. It looks like he is taking the trade. Oh, there's a Death Ward. Oh, that's bad news for Plague Doctor. So I'm saving the Kelden Warlord, and it can still gain a life, by the way. It's exactly what I do for the um, Soul Net. So I'm going to go up to 19. Ah, oh, this is so tough here for Plague Doctor. It's not looking good for him. He needs something like a Board Sweeper, but I, I don't think he's playing with Wrath of God, for example. Which would be nice in a, in a deck that's titled Honorable Death. And I was kind of discussing the, the deck suggestions in the magazine with Plague Doctor. And one of the things we talked about was that probably because this was in the alphabet era and, and card were, cards were quite scarce, that, you know, mainly in these decks, they mentioned commons and uncommons because people just didn't have a lot of cards at the time. And there wasn't a lot of access to the cards. Anyway, swing in here with everything. This is brutal. That is, I believe, four, five, six, nine points of damage. Oh, man, this is brutal. Dropping to three. Now I can kill him next turn just with my Orcish Artilleries. There is a White Knight hitting the board. I mean, maybe I'm going to go all out and attack and he has a Fog. I mean, that could be something. But yeah, it's not looking great for Honorable Death. Tapping four more. Orcish Aura Flame. Okay, making matters even worse. And then killing the White Knight. So I'm going to drop here to 16. And then, I guess, attacking or oh, gaining a life. Yeah, of course. I want to show off all my tricks before I kill Plague Doctor attacking here. Yep, that's it. So game... Ooh, also having a Fireball in hand. 
Ooh, pretty good hand again, not having that second black though. Oh, and the COP green is still in there, so I guess he kept uh, the circles in there. Maybe he's gonna take him out now for game number four. Talking about that, remember this is a best of five, so even though it's uh, two games up for me, we're still gonna play another one uh, because it is a best of five. So it's up to Plague Doctor to try to win that game to get a game number five. But first, game number four. Game number four, here we go. So I'm two games up. Plague Doctor has to win this or else he's lost a match. Anyway, starting with the planes, passing to turn. Let's see what I can do. There's a planes for me as well and passing. So no turn one play for me. There is a turn two play for Plague Doctor. White Knight hitting the board. That's quite, quite good. I probably have an Iron Claw Orc here that's going to be completely useless against the White Knight. Exactly, Iron Claw Orc. So this is a, a Korean one, or a Chinese one, or a Japanese one. I believe it's a Korean one. Anyway, attacking with the 2-2 White Knight. Going to take the damage here, and ooh, another White Knight by Plague Doctor. This is a great start for him. Only problem here is he's missing a land drop, so that's not great. If I've got an artillery here, no, I've got a Grey Ogre. Okay, this is good. For a moment there, I was worried for Plague Doctor if I would have an Orcish artillery that would kind of... Be a good blocker for the Knights. And after, of course, could start, you know, killing the White Knights after that turn of Summoning Sickness. Anyway, passing the turn here to Plague Doctor. Going to draw a card for turn. I mean, he could just attack for four, put me on 14. There's a forest. Okay, found a land from the top there. Attacking for four. That makes sense. Going to drop to 14. Another White Knight. Oh, man. Bad news. What can I do? There is another mountain. Tapping four. There's a stone giant. Okay, the stone giant is good. I mean, it can block one of the white knights because it's a 3-4. So I'm actually quite, quite happy with the stone giant. There's another forest. Tapping a forest. There's a lot of elves. I wonder if he's going to attack him. And if he does, he's going to lose a knight. Exactly. Just to deal four points of damage. So there's a lot of elves playing another planes. What else do I have? Tapping. Tapping four. Orcish or flame, perhaps. Oh, a hill giant. We haven't seen the hill giant yet. So this is a 3-3 three, three vanilla. And I remember I'm playing hill giant, stone giant. Um, and of course, two headed giant. So all the giants that were printed in the core set. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, they had three giant creatures, but they didn't have like a giant lord. Like you have Lord of Atlantis, Goblin King, Zombie Master. It would have been really cool to have like a giant, would you say giant king? Something like that. Anyway, a second red. So six mana now is quite a lot. Oh, look at that. I'm going to give something flying. I'm going to give my Iron Claw Orc flying and throw it over to Plague Doctor. So finally, I'm doing what my deck's supposed to do, right? And playing another one so I can throw another one. So at the end of turn, the Iron Claw Orc is destroyed. I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm able to show this because that was the idea, I think, of the deck, right? To throw those Orcs over at my opponent. There's the attack. With the thicket though, so I'm going to drop to 12. Don't want to block the thicket. If I want to kill it, I have to double block it. There's another thicket. Ooh. This is not great for me. I wonder if Plague Doctor will get to a point where he can play a lance on his thicket basilisk. Because that's what his deck wants to do. That would be kind of cool. So I've got lots of lands for sure. I wonder if I'm going to give my other Iron Claw Orc flying as well. I mean, this is a flavor game, right? I should, I should do what the deck is intended to do, I feel. Maybe I could fling over the ogre. I could give the ogre flying and throw it over at Plague Doctor. Oh, I think I'm going to use it. Yeah, I'm going to use it. Going to throw over the Iron Claw. Oh, this is funny. Pretty expensive lightning bolts, if you ask me, and not as efficient with only two damage a turn, but still, it would have been so nice if I could have had the Orcish Aura Flame, right? Because that works, you can give it flying first, then it attacks, it gets the bonus from the Aura Flame, you can deal three points of damage. That's like the hidden combo in the deck, but 
Yeah, don't have an Orcs or a Flame, unfortunately. Plague Doctor on 16 is looking quite good for him. He could swing in with both thickets. That's exactly what he does. I wonder if I'm going to double block one with Grey Ogre and Hill Giant. One card in hand. So blocking one with the Grey Ogre. Grey Ogre is going to die, so maybe I've got a Bolt in hand. Now remember, I'm playing a single Bolt, so... Tapping a red... Yep, there's the Lightning Bolt. So killing the Thicket here. I mean, I'm on 10, which is not a lot. But hey, at least I got to throw some Iron Claw Orcs, which is cool. Yeah, gonna throw the other one. Do it! Yay! <laughs> I love this. He's on 14. I mean, I've dealt 6 damage with 6 Iron Claw Orcs, throwing them with the Stone Giant. That's a first for me. Oh, this is so much fun. I have to say these flavor games are just so funny to play. Like you cannot hear us talking back and forth, the banter and the BS, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And there's the stone giant. I think, you know, this is kind of the, 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 the flavor magic that is, that is often forgotten in the age of magic we are in now. And even, even in the old school scene, I feel like a lot of players have forgotten this, this way of playing the game. Anyway, there's the attack with the thicket. Gonna go down to eight. It's not looking good for me. But at least I've got a lot of giants. I mean, I could consider maybe double blocking at a certain point in the game. But for now, I'm on eight. It looks like Plague Doctor is a little bit in the tank here. He's got seven lands. We're discussing what the Stone Giant does. So untapping everything here. Drawing a card for turn. Is it something useful? That's a big question. I guess it's not because I'm passing a turn. And I don't have a lot of instances in my deck. I've got a Death Ward. Could be useful here for blocking. I guess I don't have it. Going to drop to six. Going to tap five more. Another Thicket. I mean, it looks like we are going to go to game number five. Going to tap a White. Ooh, do I have an Orcish Artillery? No, another Grey Ogre. It's too bad that Stone Giant doesn't give the creature a haste as well. That would have been quite nice. I think if they would re remake the Stone Giant in today's magic scene, of course it would have much better stats, but they also would probably give it the, the creature haste as well. Anyway, there's a double block on one of the thickets, because I kind of have to, right? I'm going to drop to four. Uh-oh, why is he counting mana? Oh, Stream of Life. Okay, I was worried about a hurricane here, but it's a Stream of Life. He's playing a one-off Stream of Life, I believe. And uh, I'm not quite sure why he's... Oh, he's on 21, maybe, after his Stream of Life. Because I thought, why is he going to 1? But he's probably on 21 after the Stream. Going to tap 3. Okay, there's finally an Orcish Artillery. Very, very late to, to show up at the party. And, uh, I mean, I'm on four. I think I can survive another turn? Question mark. Tapping a white. Are we going to see a lance now? Oh, there's a lance on the thicket. That is so sweet. So Thicket Basilisk, now his first strike. And that's, of course, a combo, right? Because everything being blocked by the... Um, by the... By the that's blocking, sorry, that's blocking the thicket dies. And if the thicket deals damage first... They're going to die first, I guess. I'm not quite sure if that actually works that way. I guess it does. Anyway, attacking it with everything. I'm, I'm toast, right? I got to block the thicket. I got to block... I can survive one more turn. And doing my artillery on the thicket basilisk. And I'll take three points of damage. Go to one. But of course, my artillery does die. Right? Oh, no. Of course, I'm blocking the white knight. Yeah, that makes sense. Another artillery... Okay, so of course I've decided not to block the thicket. So one card in my hand. Hmm. And a mountain. So it's my last card for turn. 
I mean, I guess if you're a plague doctor, what you need to do is just attack with your uh, with your thicket, and I've got to block it. And every every turn, I will have to put a creature in front of the bus to try to survive. There's the attack. Ooh, attacking with everything. I wonder. I think I would have just attacked with the thicket, but of course, I don't know what he has in hand. So putting my artillery in front of a Lana Elves, my stone giant probably in front of a white knight, and then my, yeah, my other artillery in front of the thicket. So that's going to die. Let's see what else, uh, what he's got planned. I guess he's just passing the turn. So, hey, I'm still alive. I'm on one. I guess I can attack now. Ooh, going in there for six. So he would drop to 15. Untapping. What can he do? I would definitely swing in. I would probably have to block here on the Orcish. Exactly. So I'm going to block. So Orcish is going to die. But I'm still on one. And I can swing in for six again if he doesn't play a good blocker. So he would drop to nine. Well, actually, I need a blocker, right? So I need one Stone Giant. There's a soul net. Okay. Could have a little bit of life gain. Put him on 12. Am I getting back into this game? That would be insane. He's going to untap. Play a forest. Attack again. Going to block here on the giant. Going to gain a life from it. Going to go up to two. He's going to tap everything. Stream of life. Okay, so he's going to gain even more life. I thought he only had one stream in the deck. Guess he's got multiple. Going back up to 19. Yeah, the stream of life pretty much seals the deal, I think. Unless, of course, I can find like a fireball to take out the thicket. Having one fireball in the deck. Ooh, mana barbs. That's really bad for me. That mana barbs. Why am I playing a mana barbs? That's not good. So mana barbs is a card that deals one damage to you every time you tap a land for mana. So that means my soul net is no longer useful. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm just playing out this mana barbs for fun. I don't think uh, it's very good. There's a disenchant. Two damage then for Plague Doctor from the mana barbs. I guess I would I would destroy the soul net here. Because, I mean, the Mana Barbs is really just working against me. I'm on two. I basically cannot play out anything anymore. Well, at least it's one mana. I would go to one. Yeah, destroying here the Soul Net. There's the attack for two. I'm going to block here. Passing the turn. Playing a Planes. I can't even play out. Yeah, I'm playing out something to kill myself. So committing suicide here. But even without the Mana Barbs, I still would have died, of course. So yeah, game number four, one here by Plague Doctor. And uh, yeah, that means it is a 1-1. One, one. Uh, no, sorry, a 2-2. Two, two. So it means we are going to go to game number five. Yeah. Let's see who's going to win this uh, this matchup. I mean, I, I'm on the play, so I feel confident I can start playing Iron Claw Orcs a little bit quicker. So I think I've got a good chance here in game number five. Game number five. Here we go. So it's 2-2. Two, two. I'm on the play, and after this game, we will know who won the match. Is it going to be Honorable Death by Plague Doctor or Saruman's Horde by yours truly? We'll see. There's a mountain passing the turn. I mean, I'm, I am expecting Iron Claw Orcs here to hit the board in turn two. A Plains by Plague Doctor, and I'm going to not play out anything. Ooh, I kept a hand with one land. That is not smart. There's a White Knight. Oh, man. So this, this could be disastrous for me. Okay, at least finding a land from the top. So hopefully I can play out something. There's the Iron Claw Orc. And I'm passing the turn. So Plague Doctor can swing in here. There's another Plains. Okay, so only Plains for him. So if he's kind of stuck with his mana base, that could be helpful for me. Of course, he can swing in here for two. Or does he want to play more the long game? 
Because of course, if he attacks and he doesn't have another creature to cast, I can attack him back for two. So it looks like he's a little bit in the tank about this. Does he want to keep it up as a blocker or does he want to attack with it? That's of course why Sarah Angel is such a good creature. You can just attack with her and still have a blocker up the next turn. He does attack here, gonna put me on 18. Tapping two more. There's a COP red. Oh man, this is looking bad for me. I've got mana problems. I only have an Iron Claw Orc and now, okay, at least another land from the top. And now we've got a COP red to work against. This is horrible. Gonna tap three, hopefully having an Orcish Artillery here. No, a Fireball. Okay, so I can kill the White Knight with the Fireball. Okay, that's that's good, but remember, I only have one Fireball in the deck, so that kind of that weapon's gone now. That's why I actually like to have just single spells in your deck, because then you can only just play it once, like Flavorful. It feels kind of nice. Anyway, Elvish Archer hitting the board, replacing the White Knight. So another problem for me, having a Plateau, that's good. Tapping four. Okay, there's a Stone Giant, so that's pretty nice. 3-4 that can block the Elvish Archer. So Plague Doctor not having an attack, just passing the turn, not having any black mana. There's another Mountain, so at least I'm finding enough lands here. I mean, I was kind of worried after that, you know, missed land drop in turn number two. There's a Disenchant, this is huge. Yeah, now I can attack here with my Stone Giant. It's gonna drop to 17, tapping three. Ooh, there's an Ogre, two, two vanilla. And I like that kind of to play Gray Ogre and Stone Giant, because it looks like they're from the same like territory, <laughs> you know. Now I need a Hill Giant to kind of complete the set. Oh, then of course I would also need the two-headed giant to get all the giants off the deck on the on the battlefield. Anyway, pass the turn here to Plague Doctor. Ooh, and he's not doing anything. So he started off so well with that White Knight turn two and me having mana issues, but now it's all going down, down, down for him. Tapping four more. There's an Orcish Oriflame. Oh, that is rough. There's a lightning bolt on the archers. Ooh, man. That is tough. Game number five, deciding game, attacking here with everything, everything into the red zone. Remember, they get that plus one, plus O oh bonus. That means three, six, four, ten points of damage here for Plague Doctor, dropping to seven. Oh man, he's dead next turn if he cannot find something. He needs another COP red, I guess. Okay, there's at least a black mana, maybe for terror on the stone giant. You know, that would stop the bleeding a little bit, would give him one more turn. If he can, for example, cast a White Knight and have a Terra in hand, that would be quite nice. There's a Tranquility. Okay, that does something, taking away the Orcish Oriflame. Can he play the Terra next turn? Remember, it's an instant. There's no need to do it right now. Although, I mean, I do have one Death Ward in the deck, so you could say, okay, he's tapped out. Now I can play the, the, the Terra. Anyway, let's have a look. Let's see what he does. Hey, there's a terror. I'm actually happy for this because I don't, I don't want this match to end. It's so much fun. So he's going to drop to three. What else can I do? Another Iron Claw. Yeah, I mean, that's a given with my deck, right? You know, as soon as I've got two mana, I will start pooping out those Iron Claw Orcs like crazy. There's a forest. What can he do? Maybe play a thicket. I mean, it's not going to save him, but it is nice. There's a thicket. Can he play a lance on the thicket? Yes, he can. Yay. <laughs> that is so funny. That is what his deck wants to do. Play a thicket basilisk, put a lance on it. And one of the things we talked about is, okay, if this whole deck revolves around the thicket basilisk, why are there only five thickets in there in a hundred card deck? So we just had to laugh about that. Anyway, attacking for four, six here. He's going to block one. And he's gonna die. He's gonna die. But it was a nice match. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, Plague Doctor. It's been it's been a lot of fun. And oh, there was actually a red ward in the deck as well. If he just would have had some more time, yeah, he could have cast a red ward on the archer. Wow, that would have been really, really good. 
But yeah, it is what it is. Winning uh, the last game here. So, whoo, a very close victory for me. Uh, but more importantly, it was just so much fun to try out these decks. So they were here found in this magazine. Truly a piece of Magic the Gathering history that I actually got from Plague Doctor three years ago for Christmas. If you're wondering uh, about that episode, you can check it out in the show notes. I'll put a link to that episode in the show notes and uh you know what if you enjoy these matches let me know in the comments below maybe we'll do some more like flavorful matchups we do we can of course do like a lord of the rings matchup or something like there are a lot of possibilities when we're talking about building like story decks or flavor decks whatever you want to call them uh but yeah if you're interested let me know in the comments below and i'll, I'll think about maybe uploading some more of the matches and doing some more of these for you guys before you go by the way please take a moment to like share and comment all these things are free and really help the channel move forward talking about supporting the channel please consider becoming a patron as well check out patreon.com slash timmy talks for all the info and one of the perks is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll if you support the channel as a patron talking about that let's go to the end scroll Somebody can see.